Oh, this is Greg Gauss from Green Bridge coming to you on the 19th September 21. Time on deck is 22 1400 hours Central Daylight Time. And on the island of La Palma, the volcano Cumbre the Eka is going like gangbusters. All mm, is broken out there. And this is an event that I have been watching for 30 years because I had a uh, a scientist engineer warned me 30 years ago about this volcano, the potential for a tsunami that could hit the East Coast and the story cities, potentially like New York or so it was thought. Well, is this the case? Could this happen? Could we be on the verge of a major tsunami from the ECA? And what are some of the other potential tsunami things that we ought to be concerned with at this time? Uh, that's not the only thing you might want to think about. And one of the things I think about the most is the uh, Status 6 uh, Poseidon Torpedo, the 100 megaton uh, nuclear uh, unmanned drone torpedo that the uh, Russians have devised now. This thing is scary as all heck. That is a monster of the deep seas like we've never dreamed of. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got some things to ponder here. So, we're going to get all into this. And this is something, you know, I've done some maps in the past talking about places you don't want to live on the uh, coastal regions of the United States. I definitely uh, would think twice about living at, at lower uh, elevations because of these kind of things, because there's many hazards that could cause tsunamis. But right now, we've got this uh, La Palma volcano, Cumbre the Eka, ex uh, exploding. Life on that isle is gone. Mm. And whether or not we get a tsunami here, it's definitely catastrophic there on that island and in that vicinity in the Canary Islands. So we got a lot to talk about here. This I'll bring you this as part of my eyes wide open and head on a swivel series because I want you to know what you got to do to be prepared because it's a proposition on my channel to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. And we got a lot to discuss here. <laughs> now, quite often, you know, I do bring you videos about other things you can do to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. Like actions we can take to prevent some of these things that are coming down upon us. We talk about that a lot on this channel. We talk about I talk about things about how to garden, uh, worm farm. <laughs> I got videos on uh, uh, growing things like that, about hunting free stuff from the weeds and trees outside. You know, uh, you need to know how to forage. I have videos on that. But you know what? Right now, you really need to prep. You need to get ready. And uh, first off, I'll say, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Bang the hit that notification button and click all so you can see more of these videos. But my friends, I do have a special for you. It is $200 off the three month supply of this food that lasts 25 years. And with all the things going on and going around and down, the supply chains shutting down, uh, threats to our power grid, military uh, threats outside, domestic threats inside, and economic shaking, you need to be aware of this. 20, uh, $200 off a three month supply of food that lasts 25 years. You can buy as many of these as you want and keep getting them uh, and storing them over, over time because this stuff is lightweight. It's easy to store, transport for bug in or bug out. It's got a nice carrying handle, good volume and a good durable bucket. It's hard to beat guys. And uh, it comes from my Patriot Supply. But to get that great deal, you gotta go to printwithgreg.com and that's six of those buckets. You get two of those buckets or a one month supply with $50 off right now. So these are great discounts, guys. So go check that out. So let's talk about uh, this volcano. We're gonna go, uh, I'm gonna share some sites with you guys and I'm gonna show y'all some analysis. We're just gonna buzz through this stuff, guys. I'm gonna get as quick as I can. It's late here already. Uh, so I'm gonna do a share. I'm gonna go right here. And as uh, I'm gonna just do a, uh, we're gonna look at a couple of these videos. I don't wanna play them in any details. I don't want a strike. Or a copyright, but I want you to look at this scene here, guys. If I can get this thing blown up, there we go. Look at that, and you see what it says here mm, is erupted on Earth, and that's what it looks like there, my friends. That is exactly what it looks like. It is rough there, guys. Check this out. See that? That is not a place you want to be. Look, lava flowing down. See, this thing's starting to erupt. It's getting more so. The first eruptions earlier today just looked like a little puff. And now she's really going gangbusters. Apparently, she's erupting from three different spots. Today, I don't, like I said, I don't want to play this video to the extent that it would cause me a problem. You know, you're allowed certain uh, license if you're editing and talking about, you know, talking over things. 
Here's another video from uh, afar in air. This is actually a few hours old now, as is that one. I mean, look at this, guys. And you see there's people living around here. You see the street lights? This thing's coming across streets. It's going through uh, villages. Um, yeah, this is causing problems, guys. It is really causing problems. There's about 10,000 people in local towns and uh, communities there that are being evacuated. Uh, so check this out. We'll just play a little bit of this. Yeah, it's throwing rocks out. Mobilize, you might say. It's erupting down here, over here, up here, over here. Guys, we got eruptions going on at least three places, maybe right here, or some of this may be lava or fires from it. Guys, this is, what's this back here? Yeah, this is not a place you want to be. This is a three hours, four hour video here. <laughs> Guys, this is rough. Let's look toward the end. Let's see what they're showing there toward the end of this thing that's coming in on it. Like that, guys. Doing all kind of stuff up. See these big rock bombs coming back, lava bombs coming back down, lava spewing. Uh, there's the flows, there's the spews, there's cinders. It's got a little bit of all of that. Oh, shoot. What's happening here? I don't want to play now. Oh, well, enough of that. Let's go on to uh, look at this uh, volcano here. Uh, La Cumbre Vieca is the volcano. He's just from earlier in the day. That's tonight. Uh, it says it's, it's cutting the road, putting in inhabited areas, evacuations ordered, as I mentioned. Now, uh, I've mentioned this in the past. This island, this is the island, and it's split right here. It's got a big fissure. And the concern is that this would fall off. Now, some people are thinking because of the activity is here that it wouldn't happen. But uh, if it shakes the rock loose, you still got. Um, you got the weight of the rock up here, even if it's getting shut loose down here, and if it's not supported down here, it can still all come sliding down. In spite of the uh, eruptions around that, it could, it could, you know, gravity is gravity. Now, some of it might slide in the hole. Uh, hey, maybe if it don't slide down on this stuff, uh, this magma core, if it uh, solidifies close to the surface, that might help plug that. <laughs> might help plug that fissure, but I don't know, guys. And then again, there's a lot of different analysis that uh, talks about speech you know various different effects of what could happen there I, I hear some people on youtube say well nothing can happen well that's not what a lot of the analysis say but it's not maybe not as scary as some people think so it's a it's a open discussion here again here's a picture of the island and right through here is where that fissure is you can see it right here it's pretty wide right there coming down it's coming all the way through so this is the mass of rock we worried about the eruptions are centered right here but you can see lava is going everywhere. It looks like it's coming back up. And I have heard reports that this fissure has widened, it's cracked more. Uh, but that's not an official report. That's just something I got through uh, various sources here. So I'm going to X that out, Bing, come back in here. There's been a lot of analyses. And I'm going to show you some of this kind of analyses, what it looks like. Uh, a lot of analyses about what could happen. And these started in the first serious analysis was by Warden Day in 2001. This is like uh, 10 years after I heard about this uh, as a potential source of uh, tsunami. I mean, the people had uh, been talking about this for some time before Warden Day did their analysis, first cut analyses. And many later models and analyses have been done by many folks over the ensuing years. Uh, and I will show you some of that. And up through, you know, 2020. So people have been doing lots and lots of analyses of this. And, uh, you know, uh, they're talking about, you know, there could be potential this slightest this mountain fell off. You know, you could have the cities right there in the Canary Islands might see tsunamis of maybe 300 feet, which would be catastrophic beyond compare right there, you know, next to the volcano. Uh, but, you know, inverse square wall, someone as it travels outward. Um, it would get smaller, but uh, the estimates, you know, for, you know, some, there's some worries about what happens in France, although the, the, the wave we would be mainly in energy directed mainly westward, but there's still thoughts that it could be a lot of impact in places like France, maybe a little bit up in England. And the estimates for the United States have been somewhere uh, through these various analysis claiming anything from three feet to, you know, 33 feet, basically. Uh, here in the United States, there was some analysis earlier, some thoughts uh, at one time it might be more, 
But uh, these analysis depend on several things. It depends on how much rock actually falls. And people are looking at anything from 80 cubic kilometers to 500 cubic kilometers, literally from 500 to 80 cubic kilometers. And so I'm thinking the 80 is more realistic because that might be down below where the eruption is now. Uh, it just depends on how much of that area goes in the landslide, how fast it slides, what kind of uh, resistance it has once it starts sliding, how uh, if that uh, rock is lubricated on the way down, uh, the viscosity of the water, the various models of what it does when it hits the water. There's a lot of different assumptions. Any model is only as good as assumptions that go in it. And you know, quite frankly, models are no darn good, to be honest. <laughs> so we don't really know to be honest. A lot of people have taken a lot of stabs at it, but uh, you'll, talk, you know, you'll see various discussions of waves hitting South America and here, hitting Nova Scotia maybe, uh, concerns at Mexico, uh, but mainly uh, it would hit South America before it would get here according to some of these analyses. So uh, there, there's any wide range of, uh, if you just go here to, to uh, Wikipedia, you'll find this article under uh, uh, Cumbri Veheka Tsunami Hazard. Yeah, and that's pronounced like a K, a J is in this case. Cumbri Veheka. So it's um, quite a range of numbers in here. So uh, like here, off the East Coast, according to this, there would be like 31 feet. Well, you know, hey, 31 feet is like the Bonaachi uh, tsunami that wiped out what? Uh, 250,000 uh, people on the coast in the, uh, the Indian Ocean or better, uh, you know, along our eastern coast, you know, that could do a lot of damage, 33 feet, anything over, you know, eight feet's a story in a building, right? Most people aren't eight foot tall. So, you know, you got to be really concerned if you're out on the highway, uh, two feet of water, or I think it's less than maybe more like a foot can sweep your vehicle away. So it doesn't take a lot of water to cause problems. Here we're looking at things that are like, three foot, three inches to 16 foot, five inches. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, uh, five meters, 16 feet, you know, there's a lot of different numbers in here. You can just come through here. Uh, French coast are looking at, you know, three foot, three inches, but each of these models has different assumptions in them. They come up with different sizes of tsunamis. Now, I just heard uh, a VP Earthwatch says, well, there's no way it would do anything here, but you know, these models use a lot of uh, analysis, a lot of mathematics, a lot of uh, advanced models. And so uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. But while we're here, um, maybe I uh, switch shares. Halo, let's go to another share. <laughs> we wanna go look at some of these models, share screen. We're gonna go into uh, <clears throat> these files here. Uh, we're gonna look at some of those historical data for tsunamis in like the history time of the United States, basically. And we've not had any fatalities on the East Coast of the United States uh, in history with a tsunami, but we have had tsunami incidents. This is interesting, New Jersey has had like six, and why is this blank? Oh yeah, the first page is blank, that's right. So let's talk about what we've seen here in the United States and territories of the United States in this report. It's from the USGS. So this is historical stuff. So it's nice to start with historical stuff, but what's good is there's some definitions in here. That's why I thought we should come here first. So uh, the acoustic tidal rain station at Sandpoint, Alaska. We know Alaska had a huge tsunami when they had an earthquake back in 19, on uh, Easter of 1964. Um, that ran up the valley and it was incredibly high. So it talks about the hazards qualitative tsunami hazard assessment uh, for US Atlantic coast, Gulf coast. Uh, you can see the Puerto Rican and Virgin Islands have a high US West coast is high to very high. West coast of them, but we've had some uh, decent tsunamis like up to three meters in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. But uh, the West coast is on the ring of fire in Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean events mean anywhere in the Pacific Ocean could generate a tsunami and go very long ways. Of course, Alaska has had a history of large tsunamis and Hawaii has too. So a uh, number of deaths reported. See, we've not had any on the East Coast of the United States nor on the Gulf Coast, but the uh, Puerto Rican Virgin Islands have had some. Uh, Alaska, yeah. Hawaii, yes. Alaska's sparsely populated. See, this is mostly from that Easter event in 1964. 
and they had a big earthquake around Valdez and Anchorage, Anchorage and all those areas down in there. I had a guy I used to work for was sitting in a bar and he looked across, the street. he fell off a bar stone, he thought he was just drunk and he looked across the street and uh, the buildings on the other side dropped the story. He, he said he never got sober so fast in his life. <laughs> he was there when that hit. So uh, once one, one, there was a good cop far out in the hinterlands, West Texas, that. but that land was changing, getting more violent. There's a lot of killing. There's a lot of bad things. I really hate it when something just starts playing an ad when I didn't click on it. Why did it do that? This is very disturbing. I hate when that happens. All right, hang on. I stopped it. Come back in here. <sighs> I hate websites that automatically just start playing videos and start making racket, especially when they do it like 30 minutes or an hour after you opened it. That site's been open here for a little bit. I'm not, I've been kind of prepping for this uh, to talk it. Uh, so I spent them for over an hour. So I just suddenly started talking. Okay, so back to this, guys. We're, I'm just going to show you some definitions down here. We're not going to go all into this. This shows you some tsunami events in different places. Uh, this is just an interesting document for historical reference. Total number of events here. New Jersey's had six events. Uh, I talk about run ups, and we'll show what a run up is in a minute. There's a diagram. This is. Uh, number of deaths, number of events of different heights, you know, uh, three, uh, if you got run up over three meters, you know, they've had them in Alaska, we've not had them on the East Coast that high. Uh, California, it's had a few. Uh, oh, what's this say, 19 deaths? Oh yeah, the East Coast didn't have any. Okay, Washington, hmm, Oregon. Okay, they've had some events there, okay. You see, not on the East Coast, no deaths on the East Coast. But Puerto Rico, oh yeah. Virgin Islands, yes. But Alaska and Hawaii has had more. You know, we got San Martin and Volcanic Islands down in the Virgin Islands, guys. It's an active region. And I'll show you other sources of tsunamis here in a minute. But uh, yeah, it shows you this is this has got a lot of data in it. Gulf Coast is one of the calmest areas, but yeah, you can get tsunamis in the Gulf Coast. I'll show you another cause for that in a little bit. I just want to go down. There's a chart that shows what run-up is. It shows the definitions. That's where your earthquakes, hazard zones are. I think everybody's seen that map. I would hope. You know, areas not to live. You know, if you want to start marking out areas not to be at, I'd say anything in red on this map is probably where you don't want to be. <laughs> anything. Uh, uh, violent or red, you don't want to be in these areas. You don't want to be, and there's a lot of people living in those areas. You don't want to be anywhere that is, uh, you know, I'm in a green zone, which is, you know, several levels down from that, not a no risk zone, but it's a green zone. You don't want to be in an area where the elevation is too low either. I'd say you want to be at least 500 feet above sea level. Uh, there's other potential causes of tsunamis, including, well, I thought I'd see that chart in there. Maybe it's in another report. Or maybe I just scroll past it. I thought it was in this report describing what run up is. Okay, okay. I may have missed it. Give me, guys. My cursor don't want to cooperate with me. I had to reboot my computer earlier because it just quit operating. I got an old computer here and it needs to be replaced. Let me see if I can find a run up chart. Wait, what, what, what was that? No, there we are. Yeah, I just passed it. It shows uh, the dotted line. Gosh, this thing's jumping around and I got no control of my cursor. Holy smoke. Let me go back. Where was that? I hate this. Right, let's back down. Okay, guys, sorry about that. My cursor is not cooperating. It's not going where I want it to. Wow. This computer is toast. Let me find that again. There it is. The dotted line is your normal water level. They call that the water reference water level. That's the mean, I guess, altitude. You know, the ocean, you go up and down with tide and waves. Uh, this distance here is how far the water might run inland, called the indolation distance. 
You can see the tsunami wave up here, a flow depth, tsunami height, and then run-up height. Because when it hits land, sometimes it runs up a little higher. That's what run-up height is. And you have some very incredible run-up height in that uh, going up the fjords in Alaska when you had the uh, 1964 earthquake. So, I mean, some of them, I think it was like over a thousand feet. It's just insane run up heights of some of those fjords. So, guys, this is serious. Uh, and I'm going to show you some other charts on this, but I thought this was a good place to start because I wanted you to see that and see this historical data. And this is a model for uh, this shows what they were doing to compute the, chance, the risk to France from La Palma uh, tsunami landslide. This is a scientific paper that was done in 2019. They use Navier Stokes uh, now uh, models in here, multi fluid uh, models using the computations in Navier Stokes, which is a very complex mathematical approach. And they show you here the assumptions made, uh, talking about a whole lot of the analyses that went into it. They're showing how they modeled it, the mass that was to fall. I'll curse over the mass that was to fall, so various distances, what it means from here. And then here's the actual slide that would occur. And these same distances here, like G out to G3, here's G3, X3. Uh, a lot of the equations involved in here, you don't want to see all that. I'm talking about the viscosity of the water. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of serious mathematics and modeling that go into this. So, you know, if, so some people are saying, well, there's no risk. Uh, they don't really know what they're talking about. So this is the area that we're more focused on, particularly right in here in France. They we're showing some other areas in here, but they don't really talk it. Now, I guess these are the key things that we're concerned with here for tsunami build because you get a lot of concentration here in some of these inflection points, probably. So those are probably the worst areas to be concerned with in France. So but this is a model for France. It's written in English, <laughs> thankfully for us. And, you know, and again, it shows what the wave would look like. And you can see the wave is mainly focused coming out to the west, not to the east where France is at. That's what you'll see in other models of this and other papers and places. And it shows the slump coming down. They did computer modeling. Again, you can see the wave patterns are mostly focused going to the west, but there are tsunami risks even to the east being that close. See, that's the wave analysis, the models. Most of the energy is heading in our direction, according to this. And it shows it going across the Atlantic, so it would play out quite a bit across the Atlantic. Like I said, right there, the Canary Islands are talking a few hundred feet. So now, come back over here. Uh, Gulf of Mexico, also, you know, one of the biggest things you, uh, in fact, what happened in the, uh, um, word. What happened in uh, New Jersey was they had a slump, a landslide off uh, the Grand Banks because one of the tsunamis there in, I think, 1929. So uh, landslides, the edge of the continental shelf is a, any continental shelf, the East Coast, West Coast, or Gulf Coast, can cause tsunamis. They're different than a tsunami you get at the subduction zone like Bonaachi or the Cascadia subduction zone. But this is a map of uh, areas which has already had slumps and they found where the, the ground had just slumped down and played out here. And that likely caused tsunamis at some time back in history. So they did an analysis in here, look at these tsunamis over time. And they found most of them occurred over between the end of the last ice age and 5,000 years ago. But there's still some risk for tsunamis even today, but it's not as high. There's a lot of areas in here where we can get slides and it shows these, it shows a lot of these little mini basins and salt covered domes. And it's kind of a motley thing down in there in that area. Uh, but yeah, there's also, they found evidence from the tsunami from the asteroid that hit uh, while the dinosaurs out in, in, in the Gulf Coast too, guys. So uh, some people think that tsunami was uh, up to, you know, this is, bro they, they do credits after every chapter in this report for some reason, not at the very end. So, some people think that asteroid was maybe a, a put, kept, hit a tsunami that when it hit the Gulf Coast was probably as high as the Rocky Mountains. So that was <laughs> no survival situation if you hit something like that, guys. 
well, any water is like a bulldozer. I mean, it's a, even at low, low tsunamis. This was a tsunami hit Galveston in 19, actually this record date says 1922. I thought I saw early, it was earlier on one of these other reports. So maybe there's more and more. Some of the sloughs they've had. I'm not going to go all into this. I just want y'all to know there is risk of tsunamis, even in the Gulf Coast, which is one of the our calmest coast with regards to tsunamis, just from landslides. So nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. This is kind of a sideways picture. I and mean, this is the Yucatan Peninsula, and that's Chibo, okay? <laughs> so this is a funny looking picture. Haiti, South America. It's showing how things are pushing down here at right, the tectonic level. Now, there's a huge canyon trough here. That's true. So, yeah, some of the activities in the, these areas. San Andreas. Hmm. It's not a name I thought to connect to that area. That's a view looking from the other direction. Puerto Rico Trench. Here's Puerto Rico. So there's a huge trench right here. A lot of activity. These islands all push through this way. Whereas everything else is going the other way. The plates are going east to west. These are going in the opposite direction. You know, this plate's pushing this way. Yet, there, I guess this must be a subduction area between them. That's why it's probably such a deep trench. So this is just one analysis. There's probably one like this for every coast. I don't want to go this any further. I'm going to stop that share. We're going to go back to the hello. We're going to go back to the other uh, Google search here. Let me show you some other articles here. Why did that explode on me? I had to come here and shut this thing down. What was that all about? Oh, I think this is not even the article I probably brought up. Oh, I see what happened. The thing I had open just went over to the next video. <laughs> That's what I was playing. Jeez. Okay. We looked at that. Close that. That was close out some of this stuff. So I don't get anything. Let's change the junk opening on us. Okay. So here we are. This is a prepper site that looks at uh, it's a modern survival blog. It looks at tsunamis on the east coast of various depths and what they can mean. It shows the time from uh, La Palma for one, uh, you know, like eight hours, the west coast is really seven to nine hours, depending on where you're at, because it's not when you get off the same time. You see what you up here and uh, uh, these areas first, South America and up in uh, north, uh, eastern Canada would catch it before we did. Uh, wave propagation. And this is studies that predated that 2001 study, by the way. There were, the people have been looking at this for some time. So, how far inland can a tsunami go? It depends on how high it is. These things travel at the speed of sound. Sound reaches 300 feet. When it rears up by the shore, we'll lose energy as it travels inland. Well, that's true. That's definitely true. What American cities might be devastated by East Coast to make a tsunami? Well, any city on the East Coast. <laughs> Portland, Boston, New Haven, Bridgeport, New York City, New Jersey City, New York City, Atlantic City, Wilmington, Delaware. That's two Wilmington. Wilmington, North Carolina, Virginia Beach, Philadelphia. Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Savannah, Dayton, Daytona Beach, West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale. I don't have Jackson, Florida in here. For some reason, maybe they think Jackson is immune. Miami, Florida. Uh, it depends. depends on how high it is. I don't think any city on the coast is immune. But, you know, there are different coasts. Uh, geography off the coast, it can actually affect this. Now, this shows... Uh, here in the New York area is that the altitude is the elevation of the tsunami the altitude of the sun goes up how many what areas could be indulated you said even going up the Hudson River Valley here uh, yeah Massachusetts don't look too good down in here this part 
Rhode Island, looking pretty rough. Yeah, Long Island, gone, and it gets up high, real high. But, you know, what if it's, you know, like three feet? You know, it's not going to wipe everything out, but it will definitely cause extensive damage, even at three feet. This is off the east coast of the United States, uh, around the area of you know, Virginia, Washington, D.C., up in Delaware. Uh, I call it urban renewal if it's Washington, D.C., right, guys? <laughs> Chesapeake Bay here. I'll tell you something, that's a scary bridge across here. You know, we're driven across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. <laughs> the very top, that's highly interesting. I've driven it. Um, you can see this gets a lot of area going in if you get a 300 foot tsunami. Well, as I would expect a 300 foot tsunami from, from uh, La Palma, but an asteroid strike could generate a 300 foot tsunami. There could be other events. If uh, the Russians set off their uh, Poseidon, uh, their status six, so Poseidon, whatever you want to call that, 100 megaton uh, uh, tsunami torpedo, it could be a lot worse than this, guys. It could be a lot worse than this. I guess that's the beltway right there. Oh no, that's the beltway right there. There it is, that's Washington DC, yeah, that's right here. How much water would it take to get Washington DC? 150 feet, be in there, 225, get most of it, 300 feet, it'd be gone. Shows you what it'd take to wipe out Washington DC. This is further down the coast. Carolinas, North and South Carolina. Georgia. Yeah, 300 foot goes way inland in Georgia. That's down areas I go to sometimes down in here, guys. I made quite a few trips in this area and that would be flooded out. Not good, but look at Florida. If you're a prepper and you're living in Florida, you need to think about this, guys. But 75 foot or less don't look good in Florida. <laughs> There's nothing that looks good in Florida. 300, uh, 250 feet, 325 feet in Florida, you're gone. But even 75 feet, there's not much in Florida at 75 feet, guys, a little bit in the center, just a little bit in the center, center of Florida. That's all that can handle 75 feet. Whew. You want to be in Florida if you're a prepper. I know a lot of preppers are in Florida. Yeah, here's one of the things that could cause a mega tsunami right here. What hit major crater? You got to remember, most of the world is ocean. If something hits in the ocean, uh, one of these guys hits in the ocean, it's going to be worse than that La Palma. And there's some, some asteroids a lot bigger than what made this meteor crater, guys. So that's a ginormous crater. And it wasn't a ginormous asteroid that made that, by the way, but it's just at one half mass times velocity squared. That velocity term really puts the energy into the blast. All right. Here we're seeing some uh, discussion where they're really thinking that now there's no risk to, to the United States from this. For the most part, that's what they're including in these this discussions, but it depends on what models you're looking at, guys. It really does. Depends on what models you're looking at, what assumptions you make. Uh, but here's something to be concerned with, guys. Uh, I wonder if showing those submarines. That's not it. The, the uh, Russian... Uh, now, they started this program out, they called it the Canyon. So the status six nuclear powered, nuclear armed drone. This has nuclear engines in it, so it can go like forever. It's launched from a ginormous submarine. The, 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 the so-called torpedoes are 80 foot long and like, you know, five to six feet in diameter. It says five feet here. I've seen it six feet, most number I've usually seen for this. It's built big enough to carry the 100 megaton Sarbama, the full Sarbama, the largest nuclear detonation, the largest explosion ever created by mankind was a half Sarbama. They couldn't figure out how to deliver anything bigger than that and get away from it. And one day, and back in the days of the Cold War, the Russians thought about making a, a torpedo with this thing, but it was so powerful 
they couldn't uh, build a submarine that could launch it far enough to get away from it. Well, now with the nuclear engines in it, they got that problem solved. They can launch this thing and it can travel for thousands of miles away from the sub that launches it. In fact, that sub can be long gone before that thing gets off, maybe back at port. Because <laughs> they can make it loiter, go slowly, and then make a mad dash for the end. It's basically a undersea uh, intercontinental ballistic missile, this underwater missile is what this thing is, of a ginormous size. Because uh, most nuclear missiles, the largest warhead you'll find is a two megaton. I give, mind you, the Hiroshima bombs were on the order of about 15 kilotons. Kilotons is thousands of tons. Megatons are millions of tons. Like tons of TNT is what it's measured in. So 100 megatons is mind-numbing. It's huge. Uh, you're talking that one device off the coast of the United States could create a tsunami that would just inundate the whole coast if they use that. If they're using two megaton warheads and those sort of bomber, I mean, in those torpedoes, which sometimes they claim that's what they're doing, but that's not what it's built for. It's built for the 100 ton megaton one. That's what it's sized for. Then, you know, the, the two megatons would definitely take out cities, but that 100 megaton would take out coastal regions or impact other. <laughs> It'll probably come back to Europe too. But hey, Russia stuff's on the Barrett Sea. It's kind of a shoulder from all that. And the Pacific Ocean, yeah, this, this would be devastating. This is a devastating weapon to create a huge radioactive tsunami. One on the Gulf Coast would pretty much take care of everything down there, too, and go way up the Mississippi River. Uh, you're talking a tsunami bigger than what's shown on those graphs over there. You're talking where it hits the coast, at least for several miles, it could be a 1,000 feet high. I mean, this is a thing of nightmares. It would sleep way inland and be very, very catastrophic. It would, uh, you wouldn't be able to use any of the coastal facilities if that thing hits. So this, I uh, think itself way off coast and still do enormous damage. So we don't want that Poseidon torpedo, guys, uh, but it's a nuclear drone, it's, un, uh, it's, 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 it's nuts. This thing is the most insane weapon devised by man probably right here. And the Russians have done this. They finally went out and come up with this thing. That is scary. That is frightening. That is a big tsunami risk. That's one reason I wouldn't want to live in any coastal city or anywhere near the coast. So right now we got other stuff going on. Acapulco earthquakes, tsunami warnings out west because of this. You know, we just had our earthquake, what a five, four point something. And, LA, but yesterday, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck the southwest region of Mexico and triggered a tsunami warning along the shoreline. So we got tsunami warnings out here, guys. Okay, uh, this was, uh, this is a few days ago. Okay, this is on the 7th. But that whole uh, area out there is just active in the west coast right now. It's, uh, we got a lot of, uh, well, this article just came up like it was current, but okay, it's not current. This is a week old. My apologies for that. But this just shows what's going on, guys. This shows that the area is real active. Things could happen. So there's plenty to be concerned about. The uh, like I said, we just had an earthquake in LA, and maybe the you know all the faults around the Ring of Fire have been going off, except for the subduction zone and. Uh, Cascadia and uh, San Andres, you know, they're way overdue. So those may go at any time. And so you got tsunami risk with this uh, subduction zone that's associated with uh, uh, Cascadia area, you know, off the coast of uh, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Washington State, Oregon. Yeah, those places are at risk, big risk for tsunami. And uh, last time tsunami hit there, it went all the way back to Japan and East Asia. And uh, that's the reason they put that watermark line on the stones. I mean, stop this here. Right around Fukushima, the shorelines there, way back up shore had these big stones that mark on it. it says, don't build anything below this level. The reason for it was they'd had a tsunami at that level. And that occurred when the Cascadia subduction zone went off in the 1700s. 
that tsunami was bigger than the one that took the nuclear power plants out. Yet they went down there and built those nuclear power plants thinking, oh, we were good for a thousand years. Sometimes the engineers just miss it. Sometimes the geologists miss it. Historical data was there. The ancestors knew it. They warned everybody, but they still went down there and built them nuclear power plants down on the shore in Fukushima. And we see what happened. They had a tsunami and it took them out. So they've had worse and they may get worse again. So, and you can always get an asteroid strike, especially in the Pacific Ocean. That's half the world almost. You can go to Google Earth and you can swing the Earth around certain views. You almost don't see any land, just all ocean. So there's uh, definitely a, a lot of risk there for that kind of stuff. Now the risk of an asteroid, you know, is a longer term risk, but over time it's gonna happen. So that's why I would say, you know, do you, do you really want to base planting your roots and your family over the long term at the base of a volcano? I remember when I went and saw Mount Shasta, I was driving from Alaska back home to Alabama. I kind of took the long route. You know, I went down the West Coast, <laughs> so it was cutting negatively across country. And uh, I remember when I was looking at Mount Shetna and I was reading the plaque that says, this volcano blows up every 200 years and destroys everything within blah, blah, blah miles. And I looked up, I saw all those farms in there going. And I thought it occurred to my mind, would you really want to settle your family down for a long-term thing, you know, in a region like that? Oh yeah, we're going to pass this farm on down forever in the family. It's kind of like doom in your family. So why would you want, why would you want to live there? Why would you want to do that? But people just don't think, maybe especially they didn't know that when they first went there. And then people get this denial. People, you know, this normalcy bias. Well, it ain't gonna happen. Everything's gonna stay the same. That's what people do. We get normalcy bias. You got all kinds of people living around volcanoes in, in harm's way. And they get this normalcy bias. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't happen. I ain't never seen it. It ain't gonna happen. But, you know, eventually these things do happen. So if you're really looking for the long-term survival of yourself, your descendants, and you're looking for places to put down roots, you need to think hard about it. I've done videos on, on bug outs in some of the safer areas in the United States and other places. It might be the safest areas of rooting somewhere down in South America. But you go down there, you're going to stick out like a <laughs> sore thumb. <laughs> you're not going to blend in too well. There might be some large expatriate communities you might be able to find or establish or move into. But you don't stick out so bad. But you can go a few miles away. There are probably people out there resent you, most likely. I mean, they may like you as long as you're spending money and helping their economy. But when it all goes bad and they're getting hungry, you're going to look like a pork chop. Don't look like a pork chop. Don't be the pork chop. <laughs> I've said that before in this. Don't be the pork chop. All right, guys. That's really the gist of it right there. Build high and dry. Stay away from the places where the waves might fly. Stay away from the places where you're downwind from uh, nuclear power plants or where you're downwind from major uh, NORAD facilities or missile launch complexes because they'll get hammered hard in a war. Um, most of the places you're on big cities, big cities, and there ain't no big city you ever want to be in if you're a prepper and got the long term view. Everybody's moving more and more to the cities. Hmm. The sheep will the limits. Well, those are the people that will be hurt. Get your homestead. Go out somewhere and make it where you make it on your own. One of the reasons I got that place in Arizona is because I wasn't too close to Brown's Ferry right here. I looked at it and analyzed it. The more I think about it, the more I don't like it. I hope to keep this farm going, but I would love to put my emphasis out there. But now I've got this whole new thing to worry about, and that uh, I may be out of work before I meant to be, when my main income may just suddenly disappear in a matter of weeks from now, if, if I can't figure out a way around it because I'm not going to take the, you know what. And that may just end my decades long career, federal contracting. And if that happens, I am not going to be able to pay all these bills I get. So I got to figure out a way around that. Rob is bankruptcy. Can I keep both places? I really hope so, but you know, I'm gonna have a hard time getting by. I'm gonna have a hard time scraping by if that happens. Let me tight. I figure out a way to do it. But uh, still, I need to be able to figure out a way to get out there, make that work. 
If I can, you're going to see it all here. If this platform's still here, and it'll still let me be on it. <laughs> I will definitely share with you how I build that place out or what I'm going to do with here. You're going to see it. You might see me living in a van by the river instead. <laughs> or, or off a bicycle with a backpack. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how that all pans out. I don't know, guys. Yet, so let's just hang in there. But whatever plays out, if, I, if I'm allowed to be here, then uh, if we still got a power grid, I'll bring it to you. So that I'm going to say I wish everybody the best in the world. We, get, we live in a world with way too much tension, too much hatred. Try not to partake in that. Uh, just remember, it's not the people, it's the powers that push the people and jolt them into things and works their perceptions for games of power that they play upon us. They divide us against each other in ways that we shouldn't have to because we're all people. There's good people anywhere on our own earth of every race, color, creed, nationality, and religion. There's good people. And just because they think like, don't think like you don't mean they're not good people in their hearts. All these people give you their shirts off their backs. People that you wouldn't think of. There's there's also bad people anywhere you go. I don't think the good people are more than the bad people. But the people do get swayed and persuaded by their governments and organizations. And sometimes that leads to consternations that are unfortunate. So just remember this. There's light spells dark. Love dispels light. light. <laughs> love dispels hate. Go out and shine your love light to the world. All right, everyone.